We begin tonight in the not-so-free state of Florida, where the in the year 2023, it's probably easier to get a gun than it is to get a history book. Right now, Florida Republicans, led by Governor Ron DeSantis, are trying to push through a bill that would eliminate concealed weapons permits, calling the right to bear arms, quote, central to our freedom. Those same lawmakers have simultaneously cracked down on other freedoms, like children's freedom to read books. The Washington Post is reporting today that school officials in at least two Florida counties, Manatee and Duval, have directed teachers this month to remove or wrap up their own classroom libraries until the books are vetted for appropriateness under state law. Teachers who display or give a student a book deemed unallowed could face up to five years in prison. You heard that right. Five years in prison for handing a child a book. And in case you're wondering what falls under the umbrella of inappropriate for school children by Florida's standards, activist Brandon Wolf points out that one of the books rejected by Duval County Schools is The Life of Rosa Parks. What DeSantis is doing is intentional. In order to peel off Trump's Republican voters and get them on his side ahead of his presidential bid in 2024, he's turning Florida into a right-wing paradise where the focus isn't on health care or jobs or taxes or infrastructure or, I don't know, hurricane or flood insurance in one of the most natural disaster-prone states in the country. You know, normal governor stuff. But rather on the right-wing culture wars and nothing but the right-wing culture wars. And he's ticking all the boxes. Not only is he banning books about history and any mention of the existence of gay people from Florida schools, he's barring public high schools from teaching AP African American studies. He's taking aim at drag performances, even suggesting that he would urge the state's child protective services to investigate parents who take their own kids to one. He's actively trying to ban COVID vaccine mandates and restricting mask rules, while at the same time, calling for probes into supposed wrongdoing linked to the vaccine. And he's doing all of this while making sure that anyone can walk around with a gun, no permit required. It's a right-wing fantasy land, like Disney World, but in hell. Come to Florida, the meanest place on earth. So much so that even former Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro, whose supporters tried to overthrow the government down there literally just a couple of weeks ago, is trying to extend his stay in DeSantis' stand requesting a six-month tourist visa, which would make Bolsonaro the second former president who fomented a violent insurrection currently residing in the state, which tells you all that you need to know. Joining me now is Brandon Wolf, survivor of the Pulse nightclub shooting and press secretary of Equality Florida, Fernan Amandi, political analyst and Democratic pollster, and Mark Whitaker, CBS Sunday morning contributor and author of the forthcoming book, Say It Loud, 1966, the year black power challenged the civil rights movement, which is probably already illegal in Florida. Uh, and Mark, I do actually want to start with you, because you wrote a, a very interesting piece today, and I just want to read a little bit about it. And you wrote, DeSantis is wrong about black studies. You wrote, as I discovered in reporting a book about the pivotal year in black history that was 1966, when the push for black studies began at what is now San Francisco State University, the original advocates of this idea had something very different in mind. At the time, their focus was on encouraging black people themselves to understand and celebrate their role in the American story, and thus to feel a greater stake in American citizenry at a time of intense racial turmoil. If the AP curriculum that has grown out of that movement seems more designed to tell that story than to reassure white students, that's no accident. But teenagers of all races can benefit from the wider understanding of our history that black studies have helped foster. Um, as, a, as an author and uh, an historian and as a journalist, Mark, what do you make of this intense battle to suppress history that's being led by the Florida governor? Well, you know, DeSantis uh, is suggesting that somehow this curriculum and a lot of the other things he's going after with his so-called Stop Woke uh, movement and crusade is anti-American, that it's turning uh, Floridians and, and young people against each other. But what I point out is that if you go back and you actually look at the origin of, of black studies uh, in the 60s, that actually it's the opposite. I mean, it was a time of intense turmoil, uh, racial violence and so forth. And there were folks like Eldridge Cleaver and the Black Panthers who were out there trying to get uh, blacks to pick up arms. And there was a cultural wing 
of black power that said, no, 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 we're not interested in that. But what we do want is the right to actually have ourselves reflected uh, in our history. Uh, and that's where it all started. And, and, and when you think about what the alternative was then, it was actually better than more armed violence. It was also an alternative to black, uh, black nationalism of, of earlier eras, Marcus Garvey and so forth, who were saying that, that things were so bad for black people in America that they had to go someplace else. They had to go to Africa. They had to the, go to the Caribbean. Again, what, uh, what the black power pioneers and, and, and the people who, who first pioneered black studies were saying is, no, 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 uh, we have a right to be here. We want to be here, but we want um, the right to, you know, have ourselves and our history reflected in, in the broader picture of American history. And, of course, right. once that happened, women wanted it. Um, uh, the, you know, uh, other, uh, other uh, minorities wanted it. And it really changed the way we, we thought of our history, and that's the way it really deserves to be taught today. Well, and, you know, there, there are two theories, um, Fernand, as to why DeSantis is doing this. Theory number one is that he just sees the lane for himself to get to the right of Trump is to go after white Americans who have the most insecurity about cultural and racial change and to say, don't worry, I'm going to make Florida as Christian white nationalist as possible so that you'll to demonstrate to you that I'm willing to hurt the quote right people. There's a other there's another theory, though. Jamel Bowie writes the following um, in The New York Times. He reminds folks that as a congressman serving three terms from 2013 to 2018, DeSantis was one of the founders of the House Freedom Caucus, DeSantis, which is bedeviling uh, Kevin McCarthy today. DeSantis was an especially fierce opponent of so-called entitlements and other forms of federal aid. He helped lead the effort to shut down the government over funding for the Affordable Care Act in 2013 and the same year voted to pass a budget res resolution that would have cut more than $250 billion from Social Security and Medicare over a decade. In 2017, like most Republicans, he voted to re repeal the Affordable Care Act and cut taxes on corporations, high earners and wealthy donors, and you could go on and on. That, that he's doing this because if he wasn't doing culture war stuff and racial provocateurism, he'd actually have to talk about what he's for, which is the same thing that the outlandish Republican crazy caucus is for. Joy, I actually think both theories apply in this case. I mean, sure, there's some performative politics here playing towards the extreme MAGA Republican base as he intends on running for president in 2024, but there's also a bedrock philosophy that Ron DeSantis and the larger Republican Party are putting on display here in Florida. And I, and I think we need to understand it just not just from what it represents in these particular elementary school classrooms. This is a project in Florida for the Republican MAGA wing to take over all public education, all the way from K through 12 and even into the state public university system. You know, there's always been a tradition here in the state of Florida, Joy, that if you didn't necessarily want your children to be exposed to the critical thinking, uh, academic freedom and curriculum that were taught in the public schools, you could put them in private schools and pay for that. But what the Republicans are saying now is they want total control. They do want to ironically indoctrinate. And out of a uh, fascist, playbook, it's almost a cliche, they are literally starting with the classroom and working their way all up to the university uh, lecture hall as well. It is a total effort. They are conscientiously making these decisions. In fact, last week, Ron DeSantis appointed an administrator in a private parochial school to be on the Miami-Dade Public School Board. So this is a very intentional act that the Republicans are doing here, which they want to then export because they fundamentally distrust public education and they're trying to take over the system. And Florida is ground zero for that effort, Joy. Right. And, you know, Brenda, it does feel like this is an experiment that's taking place in Florida in whether or not this kind of, and you can only call it fascistic attempt to seize control of the culture, to say that we're not going to allow the natural evolution toward more openness, toward more understanding between communities. We're going to try to drag it back to the 1950s, whether women, LGBTQ folks, black folks, brown folks like it or not. Because on the other hand, they are creating more openness on the gun issue. They're saying, you don't even have to get training. You don't even have to get a permit. So on guns, they're saying, 
full permissiveness. But on education, they have teachers and students terrified that they're going to go to jail for reading. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It is about control. It's always been about control from the very beginning. It's been about government mandated conformity. And I think what you're talking about gets to the root of why I was so incensed about this particular book that you mentioned earlier. I, I brought it with me. I hope you don't mind. I have a visual aid tonight. Uh, this book by Kathleen Connors, The Life of Rosa Parks, was one of the dozens of books that Duval County rejected from first grade classrooms. And I had to know what was so egregious about it that they would be willing to make it easier to get a gun than it is to read this book in first grade in Duval County. So I ordered a copy, and here's what I think. Maybe the district objects to the reality that schools and buses were once segregated in this country and wants to hide that from young people. Maybe they're offended by the acknowledgement that Rosa Parks worked for the NAACP, a black civil rights organization. Maybe they hated the timeline of her arrest that led to a case that ultimately dismantled Alabama's racist law. But I think it's very possible that the answer to why this book was deemed inappropriate for first grade in Duval County lies right here on page 20. And it's the last sentence, and I'll read it to you. It says, Rosa's story teaches us a very important lesson, that even small actions can have a big impact. Maybe that's the real rub, that suggesting to young people that they can make this world better is just a bridge too far in DeSantis's America. Maybe the idea that this country has never really fulfilled its promise of equality for all people is a, a red line. Perhaps the right wing in Florida are just beyond intent on demanding that future generations accept their role in the status quo, that they're willing to make guns easier to access than this book for first graders, because at the end of the day, as you said, the point is government control. It's DeSantis-fueled censorship. It is government-mandated conformity. And that's why the story of Rosa Parks and her defiance is such a threat to them.